Time for the movie rating. Tonight's victim is actor Guy Stevens, known for his role in the Rifts in the movie The Warriors. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Mike? Fantastic, fantastic. So let's start with the location of the Rifts hideout. Location in the city or was any other location? Location for the movie. My scene was shot in Manhattan on the west side. On uh, 8th Street, I think it was, in a garage. That's where the Gramercy Rifts, in the Gramercy part of Manhattan. In real life, it's gravity. You would call the gravity rips. That's the game that I was in. The gravity rips. All right. It was on seventh and eleventh Avenue in Manhattan. When he shot the scene with Cyrus. Now Cyrus, that's Roger Hill. Roger Hill was my grandmother in real life. Roger Hill. Uh, can you dig it? That's Roger Hill. He was my grandmother's godson. Didn't know that. Did His mother, Roger Hill's mother, and my grandmother was very good friends. She lived, my grandmother lived on the fourth floor in the Bronx, and she lived on the fifth floor. 872 Boston Road in the Bronx. And having getting this role in the Rifts, having to uh, be in first approach to it, like, did you think that financially this might actually help you out a little bit, or was this just, just one of those just live day by day? Because this was back in 1979, 1978, uh, in terms of filming-wise. Uh, was this something that you thought this might have worked for you in terms, at, at that moment, as an actor, or did you think this was yeah. going to be uh, kind of a, uh, we'll see what happens and not really care for it right. at the time? Exactly. You know what I'm That's just it. I started thinking like that. Let me see something. I was on, in the Bronx, I was walking as a family dog trainer, and I called up, uh, happened to call up a guy I used to work for, I used to train dogs, but it's Captain Haggerty, his name was Captain Officer Dee Haggerty. Captain Officer Dee Haggerty owned the bottle of Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean was a real person. That's Captain, the bald head guy with the earring. His name is Captain Officer Dee Haggerty, a real person. I gave him a call in reference to uh, working dogs because he wanted me to stay in contact with him. Uh, I did a lot of attack work with him. As, uh, as a matter of fact, President Noriega of Panama, we trained and sold a dog for him, and I had to be the trainer dog that went to President Noriega. But uh, I asked him to give him a call, it was in August, and he said, guy, give Jerry Ann a call, she has a movie that you could be in. So I gave Jerry, Jerry was, I understand, she was, I think she was Fire Force's double, but I understand, Jerry Ann was a stunt woman. I gave her a call, I met her on a movie, on the set in Central Park, they were shooting hair, I said, Cam, I said, Cam, I'm, you know, I always wanted to be a stunt man, this was like, he Always wanted to be a stuntman. We went on the set, and they didn't use the dogs. But what happened? She took my number that year, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. She gave Captain a call. I happened to call the Captain. Coincidentally, boom, from right there. Came down and went down to uh, location Sylvia Faye. Sylvia Faye's casting, the casting lady down in Manhattan. I took off from there. From there, went down. We went down to the shoot. Met Craig Baxley, one of the drivers for Dukes of Hazzard. You know, I met him. That was that. Got into the movie Warriors. Wasn't a Screen Actors Guild member. But that day, I get paid. I get paid good. Non-union. Took off from there. I went to war. Uh, started meeting uh, stunt coordinators. Uh, Cliff Cutney, I used to see the shoots in Manhattan. Stopped by that. Right? So, so, right? so, when you got my resume, he said, give me your resume picture. Then from there, took off and met him. Cliff Cutney, in my resume, workout days, went out to work out. A stuntman workout. And, you know, I started meeting people, man. And uh, my goal was getting to the stunt world. I dislocated my arm, so I had to fall away from that, man. In terms of, like, getting into this role, even though there's a lot of very minor roles, and, of course, we know the, the main main setting here is, of course, the gang, the Warriors, but having to be in just a part of the gang, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, the gang leader or lieutenant or whatever. The fact is, like, how much of, of this role did you actually put into it? Did you think this was just, okay, I'm going to just stand here and just act like a part of the gang, or did you actually thought that this was uh, much more than what it seems? No, I did. I said, you know, so I'm going to take it from here. From here, I stood there, I was uh, an extra, some opportunity, blessings just started to come through because I stuck with it. My goal was to be a stunt man, and I was good at receiving blows, meaning you throw a blow at me, or punch at me. I'd make it look real, but what happened was to throw a blow back, it was hard for me because my arm would come out of my shoulder, you know, receiving and car driving. And, you know, I didn't get them seen because, I'm going to be honest with you, it's like, my, it hurt me. That I dislocated my arm and I have a dislocated arm that keeps falling out. You're not hundred percent, man. You could forget about, you know, the start work unless you get a little something that's not gonna affect your 
go that protects you. The stunt work, I had to forget about that. Well, you know, reality was that uh, you're not going to be the stunt man. You want to be and stick with the dog train. You know, in New York later. I did several scenes. I worked on all my, as a matter of fact, I met Dog Robinson. One of the great scenes he did to the guy doing a, a rehearsal stunt. Dog Robinson was always in Burt Reynolds' movie with stunt man and Sharky's machine. That fell out the fourth piece story. Those that got them with him. He got that call for the movie Nighthawk. Since this film was released, what what was the more advantages and disadvantages in the film, filming the film, and then outside of the film, like after the film was done? What was the more for you? Now you mentioned that since you you know, dislocated your arm and stuff, and, and having that's of course clearly it's a disadvantage. But like, were there other advantages and disadvantages performing the role? And then after the movie was released, was there anything that actually affected you personally as an artist, or uh, as far as recognition, or anything else related? It's like, you know, what I should done was, you know, I didn't think about it. what I should have done was got into the Screen Actors Guild. And at that, at that time, you need to say a few words. From what I understood, get your card, the Screen Actors Guild card, and all. That's the advantage. But what happened, I didn't go for that. I, I took it, I got depressed, man. The artist, I got depressed. And that's where I was sitting down and hate myself is that the reason why I dislocated my arm because of, it was over fight. I jumped in my face. It broke me in. I hit him and wow, man, never forget that thing. I hit him. Matter of fact, it was a friend of mine. I hit him and he really provoked me, man. Wow, shook my arm out. It didn't mess me up. I, I got into a depressed thing. It was, man, it was a lesson to be learned. You know, controlling your temper. Thinking before you act. If I, you know, if I uh, got my screen like this girl card, I would have got more. I would have got more. But, you know, things happen in the year 78. Disco, party, and, and what happened? Distractions came along. Partying and, you know, you're not focused. Being a stunt man, which I had to say, well, you're not going to get to do the stunt work that you want to do, which I want to do. I wanted to do building falls. I wanted to get at the building falls and what happened. Now, you need your arms for that, man. You need to know how to use your arms and control your balance up in it while you're coming down into whatever your air battery, your boxes. You know, I got depressed, man, because I, I couldn't do that, man. And it really it hurt. I can add it to the fight and it, it would affect me down the road. It's life, man, but, you know, uh, it's what it is, man. You know, I come to terms with. Like it used to be 60s and it's different. 
since the release of this film uh, of the Warriors. The fact is, I mean, there are gangs, but they are the the kind that are so influenced, it, 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 real or not real gangs. There are so many people that are being been influenced by this this particular film because this film was about <laughs> honor and uniting. And some people could probably take it as a negative because of uh, you know the content in this film. But the fact is, these gangs all believe in the same thing. They all want the same thing. Cyrus was trying to get everybody to, to prove that they can unite they can take over and uh, they're not right. taking taking no more crap from nobody and the fact is this has such a, a powerful a feeling a speech yeah. influence and since then like there, you know so many people have been influenced by this film and that gives them the power to stand up the power to unite and, and uh, the most positive aspect and, uh, and you can imagine everyone's dressing up the warriors the orphans <laughs> the riffs punks I mean just all everybody it's just they're all in the same place and nobody like like from the movie nobody is wasting nobody everybody's just having a, everybody's having a good time so with with you being a part of all of this and having to get this recognition you can look back at this and say you were a part of something that became such a big impact in cinema as well as culture and everybody's lives because every day every every other year or whatever they always have these the warriors events and anniversaries and all kinds of stuff and that, that's the best that's the best thing and uh, you know that's a really proud moment and even it doesn't matter if you were just standing there it doesn't matter if you were your face was in there the fact is you were a part of it the fact is that you were there and you lived right. you lived in a in an era that filmmaking was still very rough then and uh, especially when this film was being made yeah, there were real gangs back then too I mean there wasn't just play gangs there were some serious real gangs during the making of this film while on the set <laughs> achieving this recognition for you the fact is do you think this is something Something that from the Warriors, do you think like that speech? Do you think that you can apply this in today's society? You think that would have been better? Hey, Mike, a hundred percent. You said that. You said that well, and you know it's true. It's like uh, what was important. A part of what he said when uh, Cyrus says, "No one's basic, no one." You know, the gangs at war in the street, they all together standing and listening, okay, to this one guy. They said, "We can do this. We don't have to fight. We're bigger than the cops." We don't have to fight. Let's stop fight among each other. And what's happening in real life, in real life, this actually happened. You know, with the gangs, it actually happened. They had a meeting up in the Bronx on 174th Street in Hole Avenue at the Boys Club. This actually happened. The gangs got together. It's gotten bigger than it was now by all uh, having, what do you call it, expedition. But again, uh, we call that autographing. I mean, these people, I wouldn't, I never thought that it would be like this. I mean, you got warrior fans. If you see warrior page on Facebook, a warrior organization. It, what's going on is people don't just want to see they got enough warrior autographs. And what I was told yesterday was, oh, listen, you want other members, you know, you got the warriors, but what, what about the other gang? What about the, the Lizzie's, the orphans, the Rips, the Pope, the Luke, the other people that made the warriors without them, without them chasing the warriors? Hey, there's no warriors. Warriors running from you know, the people in the, the roller skates that were going to pump. Well, other than that, man, you know, I never thought it would be like this, man. You know, I went on Facebook, posted my picture of me in the Warriors. Hey, all of a sudden, my page is like, hey, you was in the Warriors? Good and Dave helps me out a lot. Dave helps me out. Yeah, he's like my manager. Things are going to happen this year, you know, with the war, you know, autographing. And he said to me, he's the guy, you know, they want other members of the movie in the Warriors. They want other members. I do have a request saying that could you say the line from the movie? Riff. Yeah, right. Go and plug in any websites or any events that you're going to be attending to regardless regarding to the Warriors or any other projects that you might be working on or anything related. Or anything but there are things that are being planned. Planned is things me and my manager. You know, to uh, you know, events. It's going to work. It's going to work. I'll keep you posted on that. Well, there you have it, everybody. That is actor Guy Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, love you